So, outlaw rogues have cooldowns, right? Or are they really broken? Well, technically, they do have cooldowns, but they can be reduced to almost nothing now. And playing as an outlaw rogue has never been more fun. Stick around to find out how to wreck face with your rogue. Should I refer to you as princess? So what's the deal with outlaw rogues? How do we remove cooldowns from our gameplay? Well, I'll tell you. Outlaw Rogue's cooldown reduction got a nice little upgrade in Dragonflight. Our blades have become very restless, and it's as though we don't even have cooldowns. And this is going to be the key to making sure you have your abilities ready for that next pack, or that next burst phase. As long as you keep beating the hell out of whatever it is you fancy beating, you're going to be able to keep it rolling. I'll tell you what, I'm a pretty talented fighter, if I do say so myself. But I'm willing to share my devious stratagem with you so that you can be just as talented and get the same adrenaline rush that I do from fighting this way. Make sure you take advantage of every opportunity. When opportunity does strike, it strikes twice. That is, your sinister strike strikes twice. And when that happens, you need to make sure to fan that hammer. When you fan the hammer, you're going to be able to get six shots off really quick. The next time you use that pistol shot, it'll be fully loaded with six shots each of which will generate a combo point. Because I'm so ruthless, I'll already have one or two combo points, so this should fill them up. Just make sure you're a quick draw and get them between the eyes, and make sure you use Greenskin's wickers to give your pistol shots an extra oomph. Alright you heavy hitting dungeon dwellers, let's talk about your sword play next. If you want to make sure your foes are summarily dispatched, it's time to pay attention. With enough practice, You'll be able to dispatch your enemies using less energy, and you'll be able to deal more damage as a result. The key to becoming a true weapon master is to make your opponents feel as if they are in a flurry of blades. To make your blade stance with precise cuts to ensure that you can engage 8 targets at once and deal maximum damage, even when you're not completely surrounded. Top all that off with some depth maneuvers Parkour! and some acrobatic strikes and you'll be able to keep your opponents at a safe 5 yard distance. This extra 5 yards can really be helpful in those situations where you need to avoid getting hit in the face with a giant cleave, or when you need to move so you don't drop something ugly on your buddies. And now a word about energy conservation from our sponsor. Oh, never mind, no sponsors. But we do need to talk about energy in order to improve that adrenaline rush we got going on. Your potency in combat will depend greatly on your energy regen. Without enough energy, you won't be able to put a magnificent fatal flourish on the beautiful carnage you've been dishing out. For those of you who are tight spenders, you'll understand the importance of managing your resources in order to seal your opponent's fate. The only thing that should be said of you is that you were vigorous. He was very vigorous, father. For anyone still struggling to have enough energy and prefer a simpler playstyle, feel free to grab a spot of thistle tea. But let me say this with resounding clarity. An echoing reprimand against your opponent will net you more overall damage in most situations. The trade-off here will be a slightly higher skill level with the class and rotation management. Now it's time for the deeper strategy. How does this all come together? We need to roll the bones to give us an edge in the fight. But we're not just going to count the odds and hope for the best. We will count the odds because that's important. But we're going to use either a little sleight of hand, or we're going to load our dice. You cheated pirate. Either way, we'll improve the chances of getting multiple buffs out of this ability, and these buffs are too great to ignore. Let's get into them. When it comes to keeping your adrenaline rush going, and keeping your dreadblade slicing your enemies to ribbons, one of the more important buffs you can get from rolling the dice is true bearing. This adds to the restless blades, and combined will give you a total of 10.5 seconds cooldown reduction on the appropriate abilities. Assuming you're using finishing moves with 7 combo points, which will be the case for most of your finishing moves. Another way the dice can roll is Skull and Crossbones. Assuming you are the Weapon Master you wish to be, you'll have a 60% chance for your Sinister Strike to strike twice. 60% of the time, it works every time. This allows for you to fan the hammer, so using your next pistol shot will fill up your combo points. 
broadside is generally regarded as one of, if not the best buff you can get from Roll the Bones. You get an extra combo point every time you use an ability that generates one, and those abilities will do 15% more damage. This buff will likely cause you to overcap combo points more often than it used to, but it's still going to be a great buff to get. The other three buffs you get from Rolling the Bones are going to feel relatively passive and have less of an impact. Buried Treasure gives a boost in energy regeneration, which will certainly help the overall flow of your gameplay. Grand Melee gives you some leech and adds two seconds of Slice and Dice for each combo point spent, which is nice because you won't need to actively use the Slice and Dice ability nearly as often. Ruthless Precision gives you some extra crit to your abilities. It gives you 60% to Between the Eyes and 15% to everything else. Madam requires one demonstration model and a quiet place to test it. Forgive the slow start, but check out how fast we get these abilities to cool down. Dreadblades will come off cooldown 20 seconds after it's cast here. Adrenaline Rush will come back after 32 seconds. Adrenaline Rush is a 20 second buff and Dreadblades is active for 10 seconds meaning you can have tons of uptime with both of these. Also, look at how quick the combo points fill up throughout the demonstration. So while everyone else is trying to figure out where and when to use their cooldowns, you could just keep on rolling the bones and keep using yours whenever you feel like it. Let's speed this up so you don't have to suffer through the whole demonstration. Let's take a look at the details breakdown to see what kind of results you might get. Don't get all cut up on the DPS part of it. I wasn't parsing, and we're not trying to get 80k DPS single target right now. We just want to see the cooldowns. The time we spent destroying that defenseless target dummy was 6 minutes 38 seconds. If we go over here to the Dreadblades, it says we were able to cast it 13 times. More than twice per minute. Let's look at the Adrenaline Rush. In that six to seven minutes, we were able to cast Adrenaline Rush nine times. Nine times. Nine times. Realistically, you won't have true bearing up throughout your whole fight. But being able to take a two minute cooldown to an average of about 25 seconds is crazy. And being able to take Adrenaline Rush from three minutes down to about 40 or 50 seconds is nuttier than squirrel. So if you were looking to have some fun during the Dragonflight expansion, Outlaw Rogue is where it's at. Now, if you would please slash the like button with your dreadblades on the way out, and subscribe if you like hanging out here.